All right, there we go. So I'm Toby. I'm from the lovely city of Hamburg in Germany. And we have this project called privacyscore.org. And for the next 20 ish minutes, uh, I want to introduce you to the platform. I want to show you what it does and what our aims are. And I hope that, you know, after this session, you will know what it is and you will, like, hopefully like it. Maybe you will even send patches or bug reports. That'd be great. So let's start. Uh, privacyscore.org is a service for investigating security and privacy properties of web pages. So what does that mean? Well, there's several definitions, right? I mean, uh, depending on who you ask, uh, you get uh, different answers as to what it means for a website to be, to be privacy friendly or not. In our case, um, we were noticing that the city of Hamburg's web page, you know, uh, this is the website of, of the city of Hamburg, and this is the website for social welfare. So I, if I'm interested in social welfare, then I visit this website of Hamburg.de. You can't notice, but that's like the city where I live in. And um, on this website, you have multiple trackers, like plenty. These are the companies that also know that I'm interested in social, in social welfare. And uh, I mean... Here in Europe, it's probably, uh, it's probably natural that this is a more tangible topic, like it's a more privacy, you know, uh, it, it, this topic needs more privacy than other topics. I was recently in Cuba, and I think the concept of social welfare is a like, good thing, and people were not necessarily concerned about, you know, people uh, learning that you're interested in social welfare because everybody does. So in Europe, however, it's a bit of a touchy subject, and you might not necessarily want other people to learn that you are you know, not among the top 1% or whatever and that you are interested in social, health, in social health care. So these companies also learn that you are potentially poor or whatever. And the question we had is, is that the new normal? Like, do people do that? Is that like the world we're living in now? And we didn't really have a tool to answer this question because... Uh, I mean, you needed to investigate all these websites of, you know, the public sector and check whether they use external tracking companies or not. So we built this, uh, the service for scanning the websites. And then you could argue, well, there is so many services already that scan websites, right? There is, uh, like, uh, the most famous one is probably the SSL Labs one, which scans your TLS configuration of your web service. And uh, there is uh, like a privacy, a more privacy focused thing from the uh, data protection agency of, uh, now I'm confused, I think it's Sweden, but I'm not entirely sure. And um, these services exist, and they are, you know, uh, they're providing their service, and it's great. And there's a few others. There's from, one from the Fraunhofer, and there's uh, yet another one which uh, sort of tries to, prop, uh, to make propaganda for. Uh, using TLS on your web services. And these are all great services, and they're all good. There's uh, more advanced ones, but they target the operators of the websites rather than the users. Or these services use a more predefined scheme of getting points to websites, you know, of getting or of ranking the results. This is uh, the, uh, from the Mozilla Observatory uh, like the scheme of how they give you points or deduct points. And um, our idea was to have public benchmarks which make it possible for website operators to get a benefit out of making the website more privacy friendly. So how would that work? The idea was to have public lists. You know, you would group similar websites, imagine all German cities in like one list, and then you would see these uh, websites being ranked. And uh, hopefully, you know, a lower ranked website would see that they could do better. They could, you know, go to the top of the list when they would use one less or one tracker less or something. So that you have a public, publicly available list of your, say, performance, how you compare to other websites. And then by implementing some more measures, you would, you know, gain more points and thus be better in the ranking. And of course, these cities in Germany is just one example. You could easily think of other examples like, you know, uh, healthcare providers, or because we're at FASDEM, 
of GNU Linux distributions or desktop systems. I'm a GNOME guy, by the way, so I have a slight bias towards uh, GNOME, and I try to sneak in some propaganda you know, in, for, in favor of uh, GNOME every so often. So you could do that. Um, and this was the idea to have these lists of websites and to have people compare you know, uh, these websites among themselves. You know, what we do not want to do is uh, do any kind of pen testing or aggressive sort of security checks, like things that would alter the state of the server you know, are not within our scope and also it's legally more problem problematic and everything. We intend to have, uh, to, to make the user change the ranking, change the results, you know, because for some people it might not necessarily be interesting to, I don't know, know whether these servers are like located in Europe. It's, that's, this is especially true for American companies. You know, if you're comparing American websites, then whether these servers are located in Europe or not is not necessarily interesting for the ranking of the websites. And uh, our, our goal is to let the user configure their, their ranking and to enable the user to make their own informed decisions based on the data that we have collected. We're not there quite yet. But, uh, I mean, hopefully we'll get many new contrib contributors soon and then we'll uh, get the patches to make that happen. And it's a free software, of course, because we're at Fastem, right? This is a GPL v3 software. You can download that from GitHub and install it and run it and, you know, improve and share and make, hopefully make the world a better place by scanning the websites and telling them how they could improve, you know, the privacy on the web. And, uh, yeah, so please check it out. PrivacyScore.org is the main website and you'll find it easily on GitHub. And um, with this tool, to coming back to the idea, we uh, now have something that can scan various lists of websites and compare them in order to you know, answer the initial question, the research question of whether Hamburg DE was more special than other cities. And there's actually this list. It's on privacyscore.org. If you click through the website, then you can uh, see that we did add uh, the city's use tracking services. Uh, we have these few lists. Um, we do have news sites because uh, it's more or less common knowledge that publishers, like news publishers, do use more tracking services than other, you know, websites, categories of websites. We also have um, the new Linux distributions from distrowatch.com. And you see we have attributes. And the idea is that you can sort of um, correlate the attributes with their performance. Maybe bigger companies have better, you know, privacy properties than smaller companies. Maybe distributions, older distributions are better in terms of privacy than newer distributions, things like that. And so you can create these lists. Everybody can create such a list. And hopefully, these lists are annotated with a lot of properties. And we have uh, projects with a standard FOSDEM. So you could you know, click the open, open the list and see the results and check uh, how many of the projects that we, are, that we have here at FOSDEM use tracking services. Turns out all do but two. So all the, I forgot the exact number, like 100 or so projects being present here, all of them do tracking, but two. DFSF, yay, and uh, Viking hosting. And you can, of course, like uh, scroll to the very bottom of that list and you know, see where this project is here at FASDEM, where they have their stand, and then approach them and tell them, well, listen, dude, if you would enable, I don't know, TLS 1.2 or so, then you would gain two points. Maybe you should do that, and then you would uh, your ranking would raise, like you would be better in this list. So please check it out. It's like live right now. You can check it out in this very moment. And uh, then hopefully if you know people involved in these projects, and uh, well, and, and you know who can make their websites better, more private, more privacy, fr more privacy friendly, then please go there and approach them and help us making the web a better place. And we have, uh, because I mentioned I'm a GNOME guy, we've also set up a list of uh, desktop environments. And you can compare, you know, 
which desktop performs how well in, this, in these tests. And maybe you select your new desktop environment based on these results. Maybe not. Uh, what do we do? So I've now talked a lot, of, a lot about the idea, what we intend to do, what we intend to achieve. And um, now I want to talk a little bit about how we intend to do that. Right now we have four categories of checks. So we check four uh, big things. We have four pillars of checks that we do. And one big check is the node tracking check that uses uh, OpenWPM. It's a great software library. It's a framework. It's essentially Firefox with a Selenium and it does uh, various, uh, well, checks itself. It tells you how many requests the browser performed and how many of those requests were uh, towards known tracking services and these type of things. So open WPM we use here and then we sort of uh, display the results in, a, in an aggregated and hopefully nicer manner. Then we use test SSL for TLS, uh, for checking the TLS configuration on the web servers, on the web server and on the mail server. And then we check things like, do they actually support TLS at all? Do they support TLS in recent versions? Do they, uh, does the TLS stack have known vulnerabilities? And you would be surprised to learn how many uh, servers out there actually have known vulnerabilities that would be easy to check by simple update of their OpenSSL library or something. And these, uh, yeah, we use these, um, uh, these tools like test SSL in this case and display the results in a hopefully nice manner. And then we check for uh, basic uh, attacks, relatively simple attacks that w could be possible or whether these attack attacks are possible at all. This includes uh, certain headers that should improve the security while browsing the web. Think of the X-Frame options header or think of the content type uh, header so that you, uh, you know, that your web browser defends certain attacks uh, much or that your web browser can defend against certain attacks more easily uh, than if the header was not set. We also do some interesting uh, information leakage checks. I like those because, uh, well, they, they tend to be more dramatic in, in certain cases. This is, you can, uh, th this is some instances of people leaving their private key around. You know, we test for, I don't know, domain.com slash key dot, uh, what is it, uh, or private.key or something, or domain.key. And then, you know, sometimes people just leave their stuff behind on the, on the root directory of their web server without, you know, uh, without deleting it. And then you may be able to <laughs> fetch that private information. And of course, when you find the private key of the TLS cert certificate, then you can decrypt all the communication and that's no, no good, right? So we do these uh, types of checks as well. And we are, of course, open to more checks. We don't, uh, uh, we're currently, we're not, you know, doing all the checks possible because we simply don't have the tooling to do that. So if you, you know, can think of a certain check that you think is important, then we'll be happy to add it to the privacy.org, privacyscore.org platform. So um, <clears throat> I, I've talked about that. How does the actual ranking then look like? By now, some of you have uh, opened the website already. I've seen we have these. Uh, we have the concepts of the concept of lists, so people are supposed to upload lists with the URLs and then optionally some attributes um, for each entry. And then we show the results in these columns and the user can uh, change their ranking based on their preferences by reordering these columns. In the future we hope to have a more fine-grained sorting and filtering mechanism for these for the results. Right now it's a bit primitive. We're being academic, so we're not necessarily the, you know, software engineers, the best software engineers. We, we code up until the point where it works and then we probably, uh, well, need to go on to the next project. So this is, uh, there's a lot of, say, room for improvement. That's the positive formulation of the situation. So there's um, many patches can be contributed still because it's not yet the pinnacle of software design and architecture. So there's, uh, no. If you want to learn some Python and uh, web and, and Django, then you can improve the project probably very easily. There's some, some low hanging fruit around. Anyway, we try to make, we, we, as I've said, we try to enable the regular user to make informed decisions based on the data. So we are trying to display the 
uh, information in, you know, in, in a manner that allows users to make informed decisions. And in this case, we've opted for these uh, like red, yellow, and green status icons. And green with a tick mark is good, and red with an X is not so good, and the middle ground is like the orange thing. And we try to make a uh, sort of an aggregate of the results available also, so that you get a general idea of how well or how bad this list performs overall. And um, this is the list, and then you can get the more detailed results by clicking on one item of this list, and then you see what checks have been performed, and then you can hopefully learn how to make your results better uh, with the next scan. So that's the idea, at least, that you can uh, improve your offering if you wanted to. You can expand certain items to get, the, to get a more detailed description of what the check is about and mm, well, what it means, if, or, or what the result means, how, how the result came together. This uh, is a PHP info. Uh, we get this um, often. Many people leave PHP info.php around. And then you can say, well, so people learn that I run PHP. What's the matter? Well, you're right. That's probably public information. Everybody does PHP. Everybody's sorry about it. Nobody really wants to run it. Everybody knows that. It's a terrible thing. In this case, though, we see uh, that it's a very old Linux version, right? It's been built uh, three, two and a half years ago from now. And uh, this particular version is probably uh, eight security fixes behind the, the most recent state. So with this information, you can infer, or the hypothesis is that with this version, you have at least eight security vulnerabilities because you've skipped eight releases, eight minor fixes. And um, so the attacker you know, may, may have an easier game if, if they know that you're running this version, which is you know, vulnerable against this or that attack. And this, um, this happens very often. And I think um, that website operators do not necessarily want to expose that, right? They do that because they are installing the service or whatever. And then once they're done, they go on to the next project. And maybe they've just forgotten to delete this file. And you know, maybe such a tool like privacyscore.org would be very helpful for them to, well, not forget about these things. So we're trying to be helpful there and make the world a better place. Um, people might necessarily, or, or, people might not necessarily be happy with us, you know, being such such an intrusive client and requesting all these weird, you know, or potentially malicious uh, files. And some people might rightfully ask, well, are you actually allowed to do that? With what, you know, what gives you the right to open our website? Well, this is sort of this sort of request that we get every now and then. And um, because we're in Germany, you cannot simply you know, open a website. You need to have this investigated whether you can. And we did. Turns out, yes, you can open websites. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's not as trivial as it sounds, right? So uh, I spare you the details. But uh, in this, like a couple of weeks ago, we got requests. You know, we, we got this, as, as I've said, we've got these emails. Why, how dare you to open our websites from? Uh, companies who are ranked in lists and who are not necessarily happy with being, you know, out there in the public and all. So it is uh, German people ask the question whether it is legal to open websites and TLDR, yes it is. Of course, um, you might not only ask the legal question but also the ethical question. Do we really want, you know, to expose the information that certain hosts are vulnerable or not to certain attacks, you know, because it also makes it easier for attackers to, well, Compromise services, compromise the privacy of users, and um, it's it's a valid question to ask. And we've went or we've opted for saying yes. Well, we hope or we think that the greater good is to well to make it easy for website operators to fix up their services, and we do not directly show certain results, you know, which are very which could be very, um, or which could lead to an easy compromise of the target service. And um, we try to, you know, be as helpful as possible without exposing, uh, like, information that would be used for attacking purposes only. 
And of course, if you really don't want to be listed on the website, then we respect that and we put you on a blacklist so that you'll never be scanned again. And we expose that fact also. Like everything, we try to be as open and as transparent as possible because the, the actual main motivation is to make the web more transparent because transparency is what we think, uh, is what, what we think is lacking in this whole tracking thing because as I've said, the initial motivation was to find out whether Hamburg was particularly bad or not by using all these tracking services, and it's not transparent. It's simply not easy to see whether like, uh, uh, city websites do that or not. So we are trying to increase the transparency by making all the data public, by making all the results public, so that everybody can see and make their own judgment about how the situation is. So how do we actually do that? Uh, I need to rush, right? We have... Um, this uh, architecture, which sort of evolved a bit over time, where we have this, um, the queue of jobs, which we distribute to several virtual machines. We have around 30 right now. That includes like the web service, the publicly facing web service, and like uh, 28 or so uh, scanning, virtual scanning machines. And that's basically just a Debian image, which has Firefox and the open WPM and everything installed. And then, uh, well, it, distributes jobs uh, via a Redis queue, and uh, they return the results and everything. And um, we do collect the data from all the hosts, and then we interpret when rendering the results. That's clever, because then you can easily change your you know, requirements and your ordering and everything. And it's not so clever, though, because it's uh, very intense in terms of computing. So just these three sites real quick. I've mentioned that, I, that we put up the list of projects being present here at FASDEM, and these are some basic results. So you might very well ask the question, how many cookies do I get you know, when I visit eclipse.org? The answer is 78. And is that good or bad? Well, it's actually the worst. This is uh, like uh, you won't get as many cookies anywhere else as from eclipse.org. Yay. And, um, is that normal? Well, it's not that unusual because LibreOffice.org gives you 75. Out of those, you get uh, one third-party cookie. Like these are uh, first-party cookies or second-party cookies. This is uh, third-party cookies. And these are known trackers, like companies that will collect your data over time and sell them, which companies who we know of that they do that. Do that. And um, then you may ask, well, how worse is or how is the tracking situation? This is now sorted by trackers. And we see that OpenStack.org gives you five long-term tracking cookies of companies that we know will sell your profile after a certain while. And the list is that. So here's the result. Now you see how the situation is. This is um, like a real, a real, quick, real quickly drawn table. And uh, you can see zero. Uh, Third-party requests are being performed by uh, uh, nine sites. And then you can see how many requests are, uh, how the distribution is of the third-party requests over sites. And then um, I am finally able to close my session. And I want to thank you for your uh, attention. And I hope I will see you soon on GitHub. And I hope you will send more lists, that you will send bug reports, ideas, and, of course, patches. Thank you very much.